Hope you're doing good. Mike back for another video. Back here to talk about macOS 15.1 Beta 1, the very update that has now brought Apple Intelligence and Siri to the max. And yes, these are not the full-fledged Apple Intelligence and Siri, but this is definitely like the beginning, the fundamental steps into Apple Intelligence and Siri 2.0 that we like to call it on our MacBooks. And so... I already kind of did this because I thought I screen recorded, so I'm actually re-recording. But if we come into settings here, you would have had an icon here showing Apple Intelligence. And then it would have asked you to set it up. And so now that we have a section down here called Apple Intelligence and Siri, you're gonna it's gonna ask you to hit continue or to accept, and then it's gonna walk you through pages of you know what Siri looks like and how you can type to Siri and all that fun jazz. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little frustrated. But essentially, I'm gonna show you guys all this here. And so this is what the page looks like in settings for Apple Intelligence and Siri. With it turned on, you still have your Siri set up if you want to do so. And then by minimizing that, that's what we're gonna jump into first is Siri. Now how I use Siri would be using my F5 key pressing and holding. And you even get a nice little chime when you activate Siri on the Mac. And so by pressing and holding F5, you see it pops up with that nice little cue there and then you can begin talking and as you guys can see it's in beta but it is recording in this little text box here and it does have a character limit and so if I keep talking you're gonna finally see it stop moving at some point so hopefully if I keep talking the box will finally close down unless and that was just part of bugs and this will actually keep going until I'm finished talking and then right now it looks like it's trying to there we go and finally cut short so you see there is a text limitation in that box before it freaks out and so that's good to see there and one of the things that it's not quite good at on the Mac yet it's a, it's definitely better in my opinion on the iPhone with iOS 18.1 is a contextual f awareness the contextual conversation with Siri so let's demonstrate that here how old is LeBron James? Who does he play for? Who drafted him? Who was the point guard that played with him? Okay. Who was a point guard that played with him in Cleveland? All right. And so it finally freaked out. So as you guys can see, Siri is getting better with the contextual awareness i only mentioned lebron james once through that series of questions and as you saw it finally freaked out so it's not all the way perfect yet or where we would like it to be but we at least there's a level of that context being built in the siri now with mac os 15.1 or mac os sequoia 15.1 however you would like to say that so it's nice to see siri having that ability there and as you guys can see if i press and hold f5 again to bring it up I can also just type into the box what I wanted to say and if I hit enter it'll look it up and boom there you go so clicking the actual Siri button doesn't do anything this is the feedback button since this is beta and this is a reinitiate you being able to speak to Siri and so that's nice that's good to see here with the Siri, I think there's supposed to be an icon up here. I don't know if that's either A, not here yet, or my the icons up here are starting to fill in uh, a lot, and it's just not able to yet. So we'll see as more iterations come down the line. But this is what Siri looks like here on the MacBook, and I, I really like that. I really like what it looks like. You get the new icon with it. And so let me know down in the comment section below you guys' thoughts in terms of Siri 2.0 with our Apple devices. The next thing I want to talk about is Apple Intelligence and what this all brings. So if we come back into settings, Apple Intelligence has brought a new focus mode called Reduced Interruptions. And you can even tell by the icon that it has like that Apple Intelligence look to the icon. And this is using Apple Intelligence to intelligently allow important notifications to interrupt you and silence notifications determined not to be important. Any notifications specifically allowed or silenced will always be allowed or silenced. And how you can have more control over that is using the allowed notifications aspect, allowing certain people, allowing certain apps. You can also set a schedule and focus filters. So that way you can have this personalized to you to get the most out of your 
Apple intelligence out of your Siri, out of your Apple device. And so I like the fact that they added that and that it's really customizable in that way. Also in privacy and security, there's a section down here for Apple intelligence, and this is to, to show reports or to export your own activity. I am not 100% certain that if I click on this, it'll probably give me more information as to whether or not this, these reports actually go to Apple or not. I don't think they do. I think this says on board. But you don't have to actually allow reporting. You can turn it off if you want to. You can do it every 15 minutes. You can do it every seven days. I think for me, I'm going to switch it to every seven days for now just because I'm probably not going to be using it that much. But I do like on a weekly basis for it to maybe, you know, create a report that I use when it comes to my messages and texts that I enter in intelligent writing tools. And so that is what we're going to talk about next is writing tools. Writing tools is everywhere. If we come into Apple Notes and I come in here, I've already kind of played around with it a little bit, but if I highlight this section here, you see the Apple Intelligence logo pop up right here, this nice little orange intelligent button. And this is where you get your writing tools, proofread, rewrite, you can change the, 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 the look and feel of the text to be more friendly, more professional, concise. You can summarize your points better. You can just use the key points. You can create a list. You can create a table. And so I like that you can use these features when creating your own notes to then better organize your notes in the notes app. So let's just do table. Let's see what this looks like if we try a table. Redesign, complete redesign dated photos and streamlined features a category now if i want to i think i can reverse it and so if i press yeah i do command z to actually you know redo but that's what a table looks like and then once it pops back up if i want to do key points or re redesign my list now it there we go so it create instead of getting rid of the old uh oh <laughs> instead of getting rid of the old actual dash it just added dashes and so now I have bullet points as opposed to dash points so you can get real creative in notes using writing tools and you can even proofread your own stuff so let's say maybe I want to just proofread this wait for it to pop up or I can right click I think I'm just going to right click you got writing tools right here and then you can show the writing tools like that it's because this kind of looks like a better pain if i want to i can rewrite it see what it see what it will do so okay so it looks like it did a little bit nothing much but it's nice to see let's see if i did hit that oh no so it actually rewrote and changed it took it out of the bullet point so maybe if i go ahead and redo it all the way i can do that so it's nice to see that you can actually change everything about what you have going on you can make it professional more concise summarize you can proofread so if i proofread it let's see if i have any mistakes in here so i'm gonna hit done and the reason why you can't quite see it is because i have the pro notes in the background kind of highlighting this so i gotta have to find a way to kind of we tweak, tweak this in order to actually see my options there or i think what i can also do is move that box so if i go ahead and hit writing tools and I want to make, uh, if I want to proofread again, I think I can actually move this box. So if I click on the box, I can actually move it down to see. And there was no proofread changes. So there we go. So I can hit done. So hopefully I can, that will stay where I moved it or this will change uh, with the integration of macOS 15.1 with the Pro Notes app. But nonetheless, you can see writing tools at full display here within Apple intelligence and I'm gonna make sure this is available on all desktops so that way when I'm over here it stays <laughs> and where else can you use it well e uh, mailing has the option to do so so as up here I'll show you guys in another one if I jump in here to you know let's just try this one there's an option up here now to summarize your emails and so if I wanted to, I can do this, and this will summarize everything that I talked about in this message thread so far, and I like that it's still private and doesn't show my actual address in this piece as I have in this email chain. So it's real nice to see how I don't have to worry about that in this case, 
when it comes to showing you guys the summarize feature. More features are supposed to come to the mail app, such as categorization. That's not here yet, but I did want to highlight that. But you have writing tools available in the mailing app as well. If I wanted to create a new email, so to speak, and I just come in here and I type in, hey, this is me, and I go ahead and highlight this. I don't know if I'm gonna get the actual button or not. Nope. So if I right click, I come down here to writing tools. I show my writing tools. I have these options here. I can proofread this. And now it's gonna change it. They are me. That's interesting. So if I want to change it, I can do that. But you can see writing tools is available here in mail as well. No, don't save that. Writing tools is basically available anywhere that you're gonna do some writing, or in other words, typing on your Mac. And that includes messages so messages here's a great example looking at messages and how it's already using Apple intelligence to understand the last text message and it's giving me options to use so I can do that I can then highlight it writing tools I have the same writing tools available here at my disposal for messages and also what messages has done is bring back the stickers within the emojis here and so if i wanted to just add one of these in here let's say i wanted to add this uh, it's probably not going to do it now interesting oh, okay now i'm just getting the load to see if it will do it as you guys see messages kind of started freaking out oh and it did add it so as you guys see it will add it in line as an emoji so i like the fact that stickers have now become stick emojis for lack of a better term your me emojis have become me emojis so you have that capability now i don't see that here quite yet now maybe if i scroll over or scroll down okay so uh, the me emoji emojis are not here yet or the me emojis as i like to call them they're not here yet on mac os 15.1 or it's just bugged out right now but it is available on ios 18.1 they brought the me emoji emoji stickers back along with the sticker emojis that can be used as an inline text message to send to somebody so it's nice to see that that is here so I like that so it's good to see that they're bringing these features and they're going to be available everywhere on our Apple devices now in terms of performance I installed this over 19 hours ago and I didn't really touch my MacBook since then and so in terms of you know I've lost about eight to nine percent doing I would even say maybe eight to fifteen percent probably recording this video. No, I, I, I actually I I've only lost a few percentages probably recording this video. I've been recording now for about thirteen minutes, and I did sit here with my screen on, app, activating Apple Intelligence, playing around with Apple Intelligence for about twenty minutes prior to that. So I've I've lost probably fifteen percent in total, which means I only lost fifteen percent on standby time since downloading and installing Mac OS 15.1 and so from a battery perspective it's I think it's gonna be doing fine we'll see once I edit a video how fast it'll crash but what I what I do know is once everything settles in maybe I do a fresh reboot on Mac OS 15.1 as well just in terms of restarting my MacBook and see if that also helps fix things because it did on my iPhone uh, the type to Siri uh, action wasn't working where you double tap the home button down at the bottom it was supposed to bring up type to Siri it wasn't working yesterday when I rebooted the phone it started working this morning so again sometimes it's all you have to do to get some of these features to work better because again it's beta software it's unfinished some bugs here and there maybe through the installation process so it just needs a nice fresh reboot but in terms of battery life if you do need a solution I have one for you right here Maybe you don't want to have to go buy a full-fledged Apple charger to get the most charging capabilities out of your MacBook or any of your devices for that matter. But considering that the MacBook and devices like that, such as laptops, are able to allow higher charging speeds, higher wattage capabilities, the Sprint X20K 100 watt power bank, 20,000 milliamp hour laptop power bank that is, with Power Delivery 3.0 is here for you. As you guys can see, slim design supports fast in and output smart digital display which is right there as you guys can see right there and for device charging and your main in and out is going to be your best port allowing a full-fledged 100 watts so you guys check that back here on the back real quick as you guys can see usb c1 input 
up to 65 watts max but the output is 100 watts max as you guys can see right there so and then as you guys see as you go further down 30 watts 18 watts 30 watts uh 45 30 20 watts so you have multiple capabilities with this power bank here so let's go ahead and get into it real quick there we go and look what we have here you got a bunch of you got your great little cable here to charge probably to charge this up because you're going to need a better cable for sure a thicker cable able to handle the amps to provide such better fast charging solutions this is it here in a nutshell and how beautiful does this look aki shout out to aki digital display right here with a little <laughs> little screen protector on it that wasn't quite on it as you see you get a great look around it that's that's a button right there so that must be the power button there we go we have currently 79 percent on here no wattage being used and so the digital display will show you the amount of battery left in your power bank as well as the, the wattage that's being kicked out to the device or devices that you're charging and so here's your in and out port so this import is able to charge this at 65 watts power delivery of course power delivery 100 watts here this is 30 watts so get yours in the, the description box below i have a link for you guys as well so hope you guys will appreciate it and again have fun charging your devices and again shout out to aki for bringing that to the channel for 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 for, for, for you know sending that out to me a very reputable company links will be in the description box for you guys if you guys want to get a, a power bank for your laptop or for your device in the general it's a nice size, nice little hefty power bank for sure. So let me know down in the comment section below, you guys thoughts in terms of Mac OS 15, Mac OS 15.1. Are you excited for these new features coming to our Macs? Are you excited for these new features coming to our Apple devices in general? What are you looking forward to use? The comment section is open for discussion. Again, as always, if you guys haven't already, make sure you like the like button, subscribe to the channel, notification bell, that's all free, that one's videos. So that way you and I can sit back, check, see what's cracking. And don't forget to hit that super thanks button down there by the like and dislike button, cash app and PayPal, and check the channel out for all the videos available to you. That's the way to keep tech fresh and alive on the channel. Go ahead, Mike, and sign it out until the next video. Wait, fool.